Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Bacon Jam. That's right, just think all these years you've been wasting your time making jam out of fruit, like some kind of wild vegan. Well, all that's about to change with this video, because thanks to recent technological advances, it is now possible to make jam with cured smoked meats. And we're gonna be using everybody's favorite cured smoked meat, bacon, and a lot of it. So let's get started, that's the first step. We're gonna take a pound and a half of good old fashioned American bacon, and we're gonna go ahead and slice that up, because step one here is we gotta cook that bacon crisp, and once we've cut that up, we're going to throw that into a heavy bottom pot set on medium heat. And by the way, don't preheat the pot. We want to throw that in a cold pot and then turn it on medium. And as that slowly comes up to temperature, you're going to notice a lot of liquid leaking out. But that's totally fine. Just give it a stir once in a while. And you know what happens, whether we're cooking mushrooms or onions or bacon. As soon as that moisture boils off and all we're left with is fat, then it will start to brown and crisp up. And of course that's going to take a while, so instead of just standing around watching it, although I have to admit that is entertaining, but instead of just watching, let's go ahead and save some time and prep our onions. So I have four large yellow onions, that's about three pounds. Obviously we peeled them, and then all you're going to do is cut them in half, cut down like that, and then just slice across like that into basically a rough dice, and do not waste time trying to do a great job here. These onions are basically going to break down pretty much completely. So we certainly don't want you to worry about getting all those pieces equally sized. Unless you're crazy, then feel free. But anyway, we're going to chop those up and reserve those until our bacon is crispy. We should be getting close, so let's check. And you might be thinking, hey, that looks pretty good. The bacon's done. No, it's not. We pretty much need all that fat rendered out so our bacon's perfectly crisp and not flabby at all. And one telltale sign you're getting close, bacon foam. Check it out. When it foams up like that, that generally means you're very close. So when it gets to this stage, pay attention, keep stirring it. And when it's right about there, basically the fat is almost the same color as the meat, which means all that bacon fat's been rendered out. When it gets to that point, we're gonna turn off our heat and carefully transfer that into a strainer to drain. And eventually when that cools down, we're gonna chop it up, but for now, just set it aside. And of course you're gonna save that bacon fat, or as they call it down south, the precious. So don't toss that. And once our bacon's prepped, we're going to go ahead and put that pot right back on the stove, right back on medium heat. And let's go ahead and drizzle in a couple teaspoons of that reserved bacon fat and a little chunk of butter. We'll go ahead and dump in our onions along with about a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to cook these stirring until they're very soft and translucent. And you know I hate to give times. This could take 10 minutes. This could take 20 minutes. I have no idea. So instead of going by time, simply go by sight. I just want you to cook those onions on medium, stirring occasionally until they look like this. And when the onions get to that point, we're going to go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients, which include some brown sugar, but not that much. Most of the other bacon jam recipes I've seen call for a ton of sugar, and it's too much. And speaking of sweetness, to balance that, we're going to add a big splash of sherry vinegar. Yes, other vinegars will work, but not quite as well. We also need some freshly ground black pepper, a nice healthy shake of cayenne, and some fresh thyme. And we'll give that a stir. And then the only other thing we need at this point is our bacon. But before you throw it back in, let's give it a quick chop. The smaller the better. Although I guess this would work with bigger pieces of bacon. But for me, since we're calling this a bacon jam, I think cutting up the bacon like this will help produce a more jam-like texture. And by the way, jam-like texture? That'd be a good name for your band. But anyway, once your bacon's cooled down, we'll go ahead and chop it up. We're going to dump that into our onion mixture. And we'll stir that in. And now for the first time, you can sort of see this bacon jam taking shape. And at this point, we're going to add just a small splash of water. And then all we're going to do is continue cooking this on medium until everything's fairly well browned and it looks like bacon jam. See right here, you might be thinking, hey, that looks good enough. It's not. And stop saying that. Those onions are still a little too light. But as you'll see here, if you continue cooking for another few minutes, you can see how that's darkening up. And that's getting very close. And then right about here, pretty much everything's cooked and resembles that beautiful brick brown color of the bacon. And at that point, yes, finally, we're done. Almost. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and turn off the heat and introduce the last few optional mandatory ingredients, which includes a little drizzle of aged balsamic vinegar and another pinch of fresh thyme. And we'll stir that in. And then last but not least, just a very small drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. And what that's going to do is give this bread a nice little shine. You see, bacon fat and butter are kind of cloudy at room temperature, whereas olive oil would keep it shine. So I do like to stir a little bit in here. And at that point, your bacon jam is done and ready to serve. 
Now, if you're ready to get your party started right now, you can just go ahead and transfer that into your serving bowl and throw it right on the buffet, which reminds me the official recommendation is to serve this at room temperature. But either way, room temp or a little warm, as long as it's spreadable, you're good to go. And speaking of room temp, that's when you're going to taste for seasoning because that's how you're going to serve it. So please taste this for salt and adjust. But anyway, if you're like me and you made this ahead of time, we're going to let that cool down to room temp. Then we're going to wrap it in plastic and throw that in the fridge until we need it. And by the way, this is really going to firm up in the fridge. So make sure you get this to room temp before the party. You can just zap it in the microwave for a few seconds. And then when it is party time, of course, you're going to transfer that into some kind of attractive bowl. And I serve mine with some homemade crostini. That's my favorite. But this is literally good on any bread, cracker, or chip, except Funyuns, because it falls through the hole. But other than that, pretty much anything's going to work here. And the reason is because this is so unbelievably delicious. It literally tastes like bacon jam. Just a gorgeous caramelized bacon flavor. And in my opinion, just the right amount of sweetness. I mean, just a truly incredible bite. I just wish I could do a better job explaining just how incredible tasting this is. But unfortunately, my vocabulary is too small, or should I say infinitesimal. But anyway, here's all you really have to know. If you did throw a Super Bowl party or any party for that matter, and this was the only thing you served, the next day people would still be talking about how amazing the food at your party was, okay? So I really do hope you give it a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.